So I'll show you a couple more things. I'm not going to show that. Okay, let's let's talk about self-organized crude color because this is to this is sort of a competing older theorem. There's a Borges reference for no apparent reason. Um, but let me explain. This is a very um, famous paper in the 80s. And I'm just going to use this picture here. I think I'll do this. Uh, so the observation was, granular, so granular matter is really complicated and weird. And it matters tremendously, right? I mean, just uh, landscapes, you know, where we put houses and how things kind of function like that. Our food, you know, rice, wheat, all these things. We're sending all this stuff around. We're putting it in containers. You know, you, I'm sure you've made a mess of things where all the salts come out at once or something because the lid came off or, uh, you know, your cereal exploded. Because cereal is pretty weird, right? If you've got little um, <coughs> whatever, they, they, you know, things get stuck together and it might not come out, right? So granular media can flow like a fluid sometimes and then not, right? And I've talked about it a little bit. So it's, a, it's, it's something that's been studied um, pretty more, I guess, starting in the 80s and 90s, it became a thing that was more stable. You certainly need computational power there as well. But again, huge thing, matters a lot. So there was an observation, just, so you, of course you start to make simple experiments, right? So just to see if we understand anything. And one was a sand pile model. So we're going to drop uh, grains of sand, and if you want the idealized one, one grain of sand at a time, makes a little sand pile, right? And so this is just in, it's a, it's the, Importantly, I guess, it's uh, falling onto a 2D plate, so you're getting this little cone that's building up. And then what's called in uh, um, geomorphology, angle, angle of repose gets reached at some point, and that's it, right? It has to, yeah, it's too steep and it, uh, there's avalanche. So the story with this was this was sort of a, this is a, yet another example of something where you get power law size distributions and could be a toy model for know, financial collapse, right? People got a little out of control here. but. Um, uh, so you would get, the, you know, now and then this would just sort of bounce down, there's one, you know, whatever, and then now and then you get a huge one. And so the idea was, we're getting parallel size distributions, can we understand this with a simple model? And, you know, okay, so there are a couple of levels here. Well, first of all, the simple model that became very famous and, and is, the, is behind what's called self-organized criticality. And the self-organized part of here is, it's a driven system, things are coming in, all the time it's being driven. And it gets, it, you know, it starts off with nothing. It gets to a state that's on this edge of criticality. Like it's, it's, all, it's always going to be in this power law size distribution state. Right? It's not gonna, never going to collapse back to zero. It's never going to be a long way away from it. It's never going to get really tall. It's always going to be in this somewhat precarious state. So here's the model. And it takes a long, it, you know, if you read the paper, you don't think they're doing this. But uh, just make it a grid like we have underneath this thing, just make a 2D grid, and then just rain down these little um, blocks, right? So it's sort of a weird Minecraft thing, I suppose. You rain down these little blocks. And the rule is, once you get to three blocks and you add one more, then it's going to go boink, spread like this, right? And it doesn't matter what's in the neighborhood. So if there's a tower of three blocks here next to it, this block will just go on top. And it's just a very artificial model. It's just going to happen. But of course, now that one has four, and so that gets to go spike as well. So you get these little, um, you know, maybe a small thing, and now and then a bigger one, and so on and so on. You get these avalanches, but they're sort of these spreading failures. OK, so this is kind of when you step back from it, it doesn't look like this at all, right? It's not even, so this is supposed to be a model of other things, like financial collapses or whatever. This is not even really close to that, even visually, right? This is like some sort of thing happening at carpet scale, like sp spreading like that. It has no height to it. It never gets above four. Uh, and then it also turned out that sand piles don't do this. They don't have these, like the early experiments or whatever was going on. People going, you know, really got into this. This is a great, like, simple example. Can we understand this thing? If you, people started to do it over and over again and couldn't reproduce or produce these parallel size distributions. So that, there's a lot of fighting. I was once on, a uh, long time ago, I went to this NATO conference on Corsica, <coughs> which had all these engineers and physicists together talking about granular media. And the engineers were really upset with the physicists who were just doing crazy things. They were just like throwing away momentum. We don't need that. We'll just make a fun toy model. And they're like, you monsters. Um, <coughs> and a huge argument I remember that was, what's the, what's the pressure distribution like underneath this? And so there was this idea that actually it kind of has this, uh, uh, it, I guess the best way to do it is, is to say like this, it has a dip in the middle, like there's less pressure in the middle. And I know I talked about 
bonds and circular bonds the other day and that sort of thing. Um, that, uh, you know, this is really a feature of granular If you fill up containers, then it starts to have so-called force chains that, that where the, you know, this grain is resting on this grain, is resting on this grain, it doesn't just push down, it starts to um, go out, kind of almost like lightning um, structures. There's some branching structure to it. And then they come together and, and maybe end up pushing on a wall. So it isn't clear, like, how so-called so force chains go, go through these things. Anyway, a lot of argument about that too, and I'm, I'm not sure what's been sorted out, to be honest. Uh, but the, the idea that there's a dip in pressure. All right, so self-organized criticality, a bit of a funny thing. Uh, quite famous, often invoked to explain these you know, behaviors of real systems, but with a very odd toy model. I mean, I've showed you a range of toy models by this point. I think some of them you know, capture reality in a much better way, like Rich Get Richer is a great, fantastic toy model, which has some sort of surprising, surprisingly strong connections in terms of actual quantitative measurement with real, real world. Ising model is pretty good. So the, so the idea is, and we sort of, we could see it with this sand pile that it would stay at this kind of critical state because it's kind of driven. Uh, if you want to take an icing model, the, this is a little magnet thing, you'd somehow have to get that temperature of right at the critical point, just before a lot of them start to line up and be on the same team and, and, a, and away from the other side where they're jumbling around because it's too hot for them. So there's this idea that somehow there's feedback <coughs> and it isn't being driven or controlled. I think someone did show that this so-called Sampile model of Per Bach and, and his colleagues was, um, was the end point of some other model. Right? Like you could see that it was like the zero temperature state of some other model. So it wasn't like it was being tuned, you know, tuned in some way. Okay, so it's Bach, Tang, and Weisenfeld, famous paper, 87. I kind of want to look at that one. So the problem is the critical state is a very, very specific point. You have to be there somehow. You have to always be at the edge between ice and water somehow. Somehow the system, somehow these more complicated things that are not necessarily physical systems. Um, so self-tuning is not always possible, right? That's absolutely true. Um, <clears throat> lots and lots of arguing. Had a good brand for it, Sock. So that was good work with Hot. You had to have a thing to fight it, at least verbally, <laughs> which we'll talk about more. Uh, let me let me put back uh, Google Scholar. Put back uh, tragically uh, died young. Uh, so this has been created in afterwards. There you go, eight thousand citations. Pretty solid. You'll see when we talk about complex networks, those those fields which start in the nine, end of the nineties. I'll tell you a lot about them. The citation numbers for them are more like forty to fifty thousand, which is an indication that you got other people excited, you know. <laughs> of course, billions of people can be wrong, but it does in that case mean you've done